received some sort of recognition tonight, but whether or not you were nominated or not nominated, if you participated in any of the shows this year in the Wichita area, you did great work. It was a great season. <laughs> During the course of the evening, some of the presenters will be talking about and celebrating the individual seasons of those theaters. And uh, I just remind you, like we started the practice last year, um, we will be announcing the audience favorite production for each of those theaters, but certificates will be given to the directors or producers of those productions after the ceremony. So we can get the ball rolling um, by, first of all, because I certainly don't want to forget to do this, we want to give great thanks to Roxy's Downtown for hosting. Yeah. for me to announce my candidacy for the presidency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So people have, have dropped out this week. But I had to say something really stupid to do that. So I won't. We'll wait. I'll turn it over to our first presenters. Wichita Center for the Arts had a shortened season as their facilities began a remodeling process. They presented the Urban Drama Orphans in the fall and the British Farce Noises Off in the spring. This season was also the last at the Center for John Boltano, who oversaw many excellent productions there. The audience's favorite production at the Center for the Arts tonight is Noises Off. Sonia and Masha and Spike, wartime drama, The Beams Are Quick Creaking, and the Mark Twain musical, Big River. The audience for favorite production for Guild Hall is Our Town. Peachhide Playhouse presented three comedies last fall, including Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow, the original Forest Office Party, and the comedy drama Becky's Car. This summer, they opened their 33rd season with the farce Till Death Do Us Part and the romantic comedy Things My Mother Taught Me. The audience's favorite production for Kichai is Things My Mother Taught Me. And let's give a big 
big round of applause for the, these four fine theaters. <laughs> we are presenting the first awards of the evening to performers in supporting roles who might not have the biggest roles but may have left the most lasting impressions on the audience. We will present four of the supporting categories. The other four will be presented later in the ceremony. Also remember, we will be announcing both winners in the category. Both recipients should come up at the same time, and you can mud wrestle, arm wrestle, thumb wrestle to see who speaks first. Five very funny actors are nominated for Outstanding Supporting Male in a Comedy. They are Sean Gessel as Spike in Vanya and Sonia and Masha and Spike, Louis Demise as Nikki in Bell Book and Candle, Damien Padilla as Gary Lejeune. Roger Tramplemain in Noises Off, and Glenn Sharp as Pearson in Office Party, and Don Weinecke as Selston Mowbray in Noises Off. The honorees for Outstanding Supporting <coughs> Male in a Comedy are Damien in Noises Off and Don Weinecke in Noises Off. Damien couldn't be here tonight, so he did ask me to accept this for him. Um, if any of you don't know, don't know Damien Padilla, he's a very wonderful actor, just a very talented individual. He'll be in Evil Dead, I believe, on the stage here in October. Um, so thank you. He did an amazing job for me in Noises Off. And I would like to take this opportunity to also, since we don't know if we'll be back up here, thanks JB for all of his contributions at the Center for the Arts over the years. Thank you, JB. Just a second what Dan said, I, if we had to end <coughs> the theater program at the Center for the Arts, I'm glad it was noise and thought. It was a great show to be in. And I think I can speak for the whole cast when, in thanking Dan for his guidance. And The, the act two, night, the act two blocking was a nightmare. <laughs> and we just spent some long nights on it. Thank you very much. Four women were nominated for five supporting performances in a musical review. They include Briley Meek, nominated both as stepsister pyromania in my sweetheart's smoking hot. And, Louis, and Lois Lane as Anchorman of Steel. Jenny Mitchell as Stacy, John Wayne's World. Patty Reader as Penny. Beauty School Melodrama, Cindy, Cindy Summers, Summers Christmas Garland. And the honorees for Outstanding Supporting Female in a Musical Review are Patty Reader for Beauty School Melodrama and Cindy Summers for Summers Stephen Hopkins in 1776, 
Aaron Patrick Craven as Older Billy in Billy Elliot, John Dalton White as Pat and Sheriff in Big River, Nathan Houseman as Senator Fifth in Yarn Town, and Justin Ralph as the King and Ben Rogers in Big River. And the honorees for supporting male in a musical are Aaron Patrick Craven, Billy Elliot, and Nathan Houseman. <laughs> Coming to dinner, Deb Campbell as Weezy, Steel Magnolias, Susan Gutley as an L, Steel Magnolias, Mary Lou Phipps Winfrey as Maddie Faye Aiken, August Osage County, Bonda Schuster as Ivy Weston, August Osage County, and Hannah C as Jean Fordham, August Osage County. The honorees for outstanding supporting female in a drama are. Jeanette Baker on Golden Pond, and Mary Lou Fitzwinfrey, August of St. I am standing in for Mary Lou, and I know she's going to be very proud of this award. Thank you. and Masha and Spike at Guildhall. And will you still love me tomorrow at Kichi? And the honorees are The Foreigner and Noises Off. Riley Meek, Jessica Heydrich, Dylan Lewis, Molly Tully, 
Molly Tilly, Lewis Mize, and Don Winicky. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the amazing uh, cast and crew, or the amazing crew, um, and of course, JB. Time, guys, I just wanted to make sure that I had the opportunity tonight to personally say thank you for working as hard as you all did and for your support and the wonderful things that we got to do in, at Center Theater at Wichita Center for the Arts. I am proudest of being able to produce Kansas Playwrights and I would like so much to thank Annie Wellsbacher and Dean Corrin and Brett Jones and Kate Snodgrass and all those wonderful playwrights who gave us so much and, and gave the, the actors actually the opportunity to work with their work, and, and, and it was just a win-win situation. The point is, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you, JB. And uh, thanks for this award, it, it means a lot. I did this production in high school, so it was really fun to come back and direct it, and uh, it, just an amazing cast, amazing tech crew, uh, particularly Chris and Jessica Fisher, who did the set, Derek Grunwald, who did the sound, and we just wanted to do so, uh, Thank you so much for this. It means a lot. And if you didn't see that and didn't see Anthony running around doing rain machines and all sorts of stuff, you missed that was a show in and of itself. Um, so I wanted to make sure to get Anthony up here to accept his award. <laughs> Um, I actually, uh, I do want to thank uh, 
JB, especially because um, uh, The Grapes of Wrath was actually the very first theatrical violence staging <laughs> I did <laughs> in uh, Wichita after I started on this venture. And it was through your faith and generosity that kind of launched me into this aspect of it. And I can't thank you enough for that opportunity. Um, the funniest thing in the world in my high school graduation prophecies, it was prophesied that I would become a Hollywood stunt girl. Go <laughs> 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 <Lo> and behold. <laughs> thank you all very much. of the plays. The nominees are Adam Akers, they're playing our song. Randy Harrison, the beams are creaking. Randy Harrison, Vanya and Sonia and Masha and Spike. Dan and Mark Schuster, the game's afoot. Brian Wellsby, Steel Magnolias. And the two honorees for outstanding sign, sound design are... Randy Harrison for The Beams Are Creaking, and Brian Wellsby for Steel Magnolia. Sir, thank you very much, and working with Phil Sperry and Deb Campbell and all of the cast of Steel Magnolias. Next, we celebrate property designers who expertly give us actors something to do with our hands. <laughs> Those nominated are John Boldeno for Orphans, Louise Brinegar for August, Osage County, Louise Brinegar Noises Off. Aaron Prophet, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, Cindy Purcell and Jane Tanner for Death by Design, and Christine Tashev, Big Bang. And the two property designers honored are Louise Brinegar, August Osage County, Christine Tashev, Big Bang. <laughs> Campbell, who uh, 15 years ago when we first did Big Bang, uh, she and I, she worked, I worked together for like a 150 props. So I, I have to share this with Deb, and it was a lot of fun to get to do this show again. Thank you. Um, there are some shows that just really seem like family and that it is such a special environment to work in and this was one of them. Um, Crystal, Dan Campbell, Michael Chris, our directors, Heaven and Jedediah, our backstage crew, and Mark Anderson, you are fabulous to work with. There isn't anybody that I work better with in terms of set and properties design than Mark. Um, and every time I do a show I learn something new. This time it was learning how to make fake green bean casseroles <laughs> night after night, so that was fun. And thank you to the cast who really just made this show a joy. They brought old pictures, they brought college memorabilia, they fed themselves every night. Um, it was just great fun to work with all of you. 
and um, as always to my husband Gene for always being so supportive. and nobody can see them, what's the point? <laughs> we now recognize the outstanding light, lighting designers. The nominees are David Neville, Big Fish, David Neville, Billy Elliot, Madeline Nevins, Hello Dolly, Sean Roberson, Our Town, Sean Roberson, The Beams Are Creaking, Brian Wellsby, Steel Magnolias. David Neville, Billy Elliot, and Madeline Nevins. Hello, Doc. everybody else's back, okay? 
Thank you so much. Male 
performances in a drama. The characters in this category range from small town newspaper publisher to not the general. The nominees are Robert Barnes as John Prentice Sr. Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Bobby Green as Purple No Block and The Maids Are Creeping. And Larry Hartley as Mr. Raymond R. Town. Jason Krause as Geary and Von Oh goodness. <laughs> Schlabendor, thank you. <laughs> in the Phoenix <laughs> Kenneth Mitchell as Little Charles Aiken in August, Osage County, and Anthony Rich as Simon Stimson in Our Town. And the honorees are. <laughs> Larry Hartley for Our Town. Kenneth Mitchell for August the Fifth. Vespiden. Vespiden. 
am Liz Anderson, and I've had one imp since Twitchell. And I'm still Brad Robertson. There are four more theaters whose seasons we belong to. Roxy's Downtown opened a newly renovated theater with two holiday productions, Plaid Tidings and Santa Land Diaries, Summer's Christmas Garland. They brought in the new year with Always Patsy Klein, followed by Big Bang. The summer brought local premiere of Cougars the Musical. The audience favorite production for Roxy's is the Big Bang. presented an eight-show season of new and older shows. These included newer scripts like The Games of Foot or Holmes for the Holidays, the family drama August Osage County, Motherhood Out Loud, and Death by Design. The older plays included On Golden Pond, Bell, Book, and Candle, Last Night of Ballyhoo, and The Foreigner. The audience favorite production for Wichita Community Theater is August Osage County. Included two classic dramas, Cyrano de Bergerac and a reimagined Richard III, two musicals, You're in Town, and a revival of 1776, and two dramas focusing on women, String of Pearls, and Steel Magnolias. The audience favorite production for Signature Theater is You're in Town. <laughs> of King John last fall and As You Like It this summer. The audience favorite production for Wichita Shakespeare Company is As You Like It. season we have so much talent here in the area but we also are blessed to have a number of great guest artists brought in particularly by Music Theater Wichita and we want to celebrate the tremendous achievement of one of those artists this year. Um, the show Billy Elliot is not Billy Elliot without a phenomenal young performer to play that role and uh, I think Music Theater was so lucky to be able to get the young man who played that role. And um, when you thought about it, I mean, what an exhausting, demanding role. And to do seven performances of it. You know, when it was done on Broadway and in London, there's like three young men that, that cycle around um, playing the role at different performances. But the role was expertly done and kind of, I think, unforgettably done by Mitchell Tobin. And, uh, Dr. Manager at Music Theater is going to accept the award on Mitchell's behalf, and I think he has maybe a note from the Tobin family. So. Hi again. Um, so I'm not Mitchell Tobin, but I'm Mitchell Sutherland. Um, he wrote uh, a little paragraph here that he wanted me to read. Uh, since he couldn't be here, he's uh, being in school or something. Uh, and uh, so I'll just go ahead and read it. Um, so, from Mitchell Tobin, I am truly honored to accept this award on behalf of the entire cast, creative staff, and all the people behind the stage at Billy Elliot. Without everyone's love and support, we could never have had such a fabulous run. I'd like to thank Nora Brennan for believing in me, and Wayne, Allison, and Stephen, and Music Theater Wichita for providing me with such a great opportunity. Uh, I'd also like to thank all my dance teachers at Art of Classical Ballet and Performance Edge 2, without whom I wouldn't have had the training necessary. I'd also like to thank my family, my mom, my dad, my brother Ben, and especially my sister uh, Sheena without whose love and support none of this would have been possible. And finally, I'd like to thank Billy Elliot, who I feel most connected with after all these years. So, thank you all very much. Um, at the present, there are 11 member theaters, 
as part of the Mary Jane Teal Theater Association. Uh, but there are two new theater efforts um, in the area that we wanted to give special attention to and give special merit awards to. The first is DC. DC Productions. Uh, they've been around for two or three years. Adult Zuckerman has come back and, and helped spearhead um, these music theater productions, first done at Newman, and then this summer, uh, sell out amazing production of Heathers um, at the Crown Uptown. So um, we want to give a round of applause. today and I'm scared I'm too old to do that. Um, <laughs> to have a passion you can live is a blessing in itself. To be able to share that passion with your son is truly a gift and to be honored by your peers is icing on the cake. This was this was an incredible summer for, for Dalton and I and all of you that were involved in Heathers and all of you that weren't and just supported it. Your support means all the world. Thank you to all of you for honoring us, for, for spreading the word about the show, for coming and being a corn nut with us. Woo. Some of you understand that. Um, and just supporting our crazy artistic venture, as my son would say. Um, thanks to the Crown staff for the, for the start of a beautiful relationship. It's just been a blast. To the rest of our creative staff, Darian and Paul, who we could not do without. And just again, to all of you that have been a part of DZ Productions since we have started. There's some of you that have been with us since the get-go, back in the glory days. Um, and to my fellow corn nuts that are out there, we made it beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> weeks and then do three performances, which I think, well, wow, that's an awful lot of work for it. not much opportunity to perform. And then a new group um, came on the scene, and I was staggered by how much work they obviously put into the productions to do one performance of each. Um, and this, uh, this, the name of this group probably outdistances Vespastad and Minus uh, Onyamasha and Spike and any other name. The Obstreperous Players for Theater Thursdays at the Fish House, a month of thrilling theater. So let's recognize their well, Thank you. This is a, that's funny, it's awesome. Uh, obstreperous <laughs> means unruly. So, um, and we actually found that word when we were doing She Stoops to Conquer, a community theater, so. Um, and we sort of do unruly theater. Um, we, we've actually been doing plays at the Fish House, which if you've never been there, it's an art gallery on Commerce Street. Been doing them since 2007, when we started with the production of Medea, and it was very dramatic. And uh, <laughs> she was Medea, which was great, yeah. Very dramatic. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and after, after Theater on Consignment, which I want to give them a round of applause. <laughs> after they sort of threw in the towel, we saw a big opening in um, contemporary, edgy theater. So that's what we started to do. Last year we started Theater Thursdays, which is a different contemporary play every Thursday in March. And we are doing it again this year. And this year... Uh, so yes, there are five Thursdays in March this year, so we are even more insane. Uh, I'll just tell you the proposed season right now. Uh, we want to do A Steady Rain, um, Coronado, um, I don't know if anyone knows these shows. <laughs> um, the Beauty Queen of Linani, which is a really good show. Um, Constellations, which was just on Broadway. And then also Tom Payne, uh, play about nothing. So please come. It's every Thursday in March. You, you, uh, it's easy to remember Theater Thursdays. So hopefully we'll see you next March. I'm still Lynn. Yay! 
Alrighty, and we are here to honor the work of directors, choreographers, and ensembles. There are five musical directors nominated for their work on musicals and reviews, and they are Rich Prune, Glad Tidings, Carla Burns, Blues in the Night, Ken Gale for Big River, Jeff Giriot for Instrumental Direction of Big River, and Diane Houseman for You're in Town. Yep, we know it. Thank you. And the two honorees for Outstanding Musical Direction are... Rich Brood for Plaid Tidings. <laughs> and the one and only Miss Diane House. I'm almost as tall as Rich, but I'll get to take this on behalf of Rich, who, um, he's my neighbor. I'll see him real soon. <laughs> Steve Hitchcock and Jenny Mitchell for A Bad Christmas Carol and Jenny Hughes. <laughs> as 
wonderful experience to work at Signature Theater for Sue Magnolias. Wonderful, wonderful cast starring Molly, Deanne, Susan, Deb, Gina, and Carrie. Thank you so much, and working with Mr. Bill Spirit. The women taught us a lot. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Um, this means a lot to me, um, and it especially means a lot now that it's named after Dick Wells Walker, which is uh, what an honor. Um, thank you again to just my cast. I haven't mentioned their names because I think I'm going to forget them all. But <laughs> Andrew, Michelle, uh, Kevin, Dave Bailey, um, Miranda. Uh, who am I forgetting? Mark Schuster. Did I did I get all of them? Logan Bueller. Thank you to the incredible cast. The incredible crew, and thank you for Community Theater for trusting me. This was their audience choice show, so when I when I applied, it could have been three different shows. So thank you for trusting me to uh, direct something. So. <laughs>
Well, I have to say that playing an 80-year-old retired college English professor is a real stretch for me. First to Allison and to Dan for their direction, and to my, and I'm going to hope I can remember everybody, and to my fellow cast members, Donna, Dana, Gilbert, Kevin, uh, and me. Did I get everybody? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I got them all. Hi. Cyrano de Vestabad. Um, it was, uh, it's just remarkable. I, I just want to thank uh, Deb, that was the original title, uh, Deb, Deb and Richard and Coquette and um, Phil for his excellent direction and for believing in me uh, when I didn't. And um, the amazing cast, uh, especially Allison and Lewis, for making this whole discovery over those weeks, just an absolute pleasure. And of course, my partners in all things, my daughters here, Maddie, and my wife, Sanda. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I just want to, to also add the accolades for JB and the Center for the Arts. I mean, not only have you sustained this amazing community of theater, uh, to an excellent degree, but also I met Sanda, you know, if you hadn't cast me and her in Arcadia in 1997, I wouldn't be as happy as I am right now. Um, and finally Dick, you know, he was one of my teachers, so was Don Winnicky. Don Winnicky was, uh, he taught me Shakespeare. And um, Dick Wellsbacher taught me uh, how to play in a serious way, you know, and made me think of this Robert Frost line, he said, we're at our best when our work is play for mortal stakes. And uh, I just want to thank Dick Wellsbacher for constantly keeping the stakes high and uh, the joy abundant. And uh, thank you all very much. Trained by the nominees for lead fate female in a musical review range from near tragic to the outrageous. They include Trisha Garns as the lady, Blues in the Night, Sheila Kennard as the woman, Blues in the Night, <laughs> Riley Meek as Liz Cheney, John Wayne's World, Christine Tashev as Louise Sager, always Patsy Cline, and Molly Tully as Cinder Smella, my sweetheart is smoking hot. <laughs> the women honored are Trisha Garns in Blues in the Night and Christine Kind of I wasn't on the Grand Old Opera. <laughs> but it was uh, both thrilling and terrifying to uh, repeat this role 19 years later because uh, there are so many lines and I'm 63 years old and I didn't think I could remember all the lines so it was it was difficult but thrilling and wonderful and thank you to our illustrious leader John Hammer for allowing us to uh, repeat this production and bring it back. It was a wonderful. I um, also want to thank Cindy Summers. Um, Always Pets of Pine celebrates a wonderful friendship between women and to get to repeat that with Cindy. We laughed and cried and hugged each other and I had a wonderful experience repeating this together 19 years later, and I love her dearly. So, thank you.
lead male on four different musicals. The nominees are Steve Hitchcock as Cornelius Hack in Hello Dolly, Gavin Myers as Huck in Big River, Anthony Riss as Officer Lockstock in You're in Town, Ryan Schaefer as Bobby Strong in You're in Town, and Ray Wills as Vernon Gersh as in their plan. And the two outstanding lead males in a musical are Steve Hitchcock and Hello Dolly. <laughs>
Everybody had great characters. I just want to do a shout out to uh, Chris, who was a little disturbing. <laughs> and, but everybody, everybody was just great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for Billy Elliot. Um, I said I got here a week ago, which is partially true. Uh, I was the uh, assistant production manager this summer, so I got to be here for uh, Billy Elliot, and it was quite the labor of love uh, to get it on stage, and it was uh, something uh, the whole company had to pull together to get uh, to get up there, and we, we ended up having such a great time with it and putting on just a pretty fantastic musical we think. So, uh, thank you so much for the award. Uh, uh, yeah. two awards that are given annually uh, for distinguished service in the theater community. And I'd say we should probably try to be more serious about these, but I think that force is left alone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first award we're going to have is named in honor of Ruth McCormick. Uh, Ruth McCormick was a great high school teacher who taught for many years at Southeast. She was my drama teacher at Southeast. She was a fierce woman that you learned a lot about theater. And so this Educator of the Year award is named after her. She was a contemporary of Mary Jane Teal. I think they worked on a lot of projects together. So to honor and denounce uh, the Ruth McCormick Educator of the Year for this year, uh, I want to introduce Jessica Fisher. students, who teaches the entire student, not just what will my productions be, but what productions can help my students to learn. She doesn't focus on her productions, the difficulties of who she has to work with. She gets the job done, and she educates her actors, she educates her technicians, and most importantly, she educates her students in her classroom. This educator believes in the power of education. She proves that by doing what all the master educators do. She continues to educate herself. When she found that she, she didn't feel she was strong enough in um, her scenic design skills, she took it upon herself to go to New York and uh, do an entire class in scene painting at the Cobalt Studios in White Lake, New York. She applied for a grant and got it to go to New York City. To, uh, she got an endowment for the humanities to study Shakespeare in New York. She continues to educate herself and she continues to pass that down to her students. Being an educator at this time in the state of Kansas <laughs> requires what is true of, of all theater people. We have to be resourceful in a time when we are constrained. We have to be creative in a time when our creativity is not always appreciated. This teacher gives up herself 100% to her students. She also bought me a bottle of wine. She's so mean to me. <laughs>
not be happier to call her my colleague as well as my dear friend, Miss Kathleen Barber. By the time I got to the third high school, I was over it. I didn't want to make friends. I didn't want to try anymore. And my mother made me take a drama one class. And that changed everything. Um, because in the drama one class, I, I found a home. I never had a permanent home. And the theater became my home. And Without that, I don't know what I would be doing or where I would be. I wouldn't be here. I'd probably be holed up in some basement listening to the Smiths. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't do that sometimes anyway. Um, but this, this is my 20th year at Mays High School. I can't, I can't believe it. Um, as, as Jessica mentioned, it's a real challenge for Kansas teachers right now and has always been a challenge for arts teachers because we have to convince people that what we do is valuable and important. And um, you know, our school, like many schools, is pushing STEM, uh, which is great, but there's no A in it yet uh, for STEAM. So, uh, but I think we all know that theater teaches everything. This morning I was teaching about electricity, my students were using geometry, um, and we were doing all kinds of things that involve everything. So. What my goal as an educator has always been to give students what I had, to give them a home. And I've had so many students tell me that they wouldn't have made it through high school if it hadn't been for the theater. They wouldn't have, you know, it made it easier for them. It gave them something to look forward to. And I wanted that for them. I also wanted to foster a lifelong love of theater. And um, I actually have a couple of students here tonight uh, Justin Ralph is here, Steve Hitchcock, was in my very first drama class. I had a taught at Mays High School. Steve, I'm sorry. I know more now. Um, so, um, I'm, no matter what I have to do, I'm going to keep that going. I want the students to have that. You know, and if that means working with lighting fixtures that are older than my students, um, I'm going to do that. If it means cleaning the moldy paint off to get to the good paint underneath, which I had to do this morning, um, <laughs> I'll do that and just keep it going. Um, but what really does help is some appreciation every once in a while. So I would really like to thank the Mary Jane Teal uh, Committee for uh, honoring me with this award and thinking of me. And I'm just really appreciative. Thank you so very much. so that they can afford to pay uh, their performers and much of their staff that volunteers are a backbone of what goes on in theater and so much of our community 
um, the whole operation is dependent upon volunteers. And so we think it's important to recognize one of those outstanding volunteers each season. Uh, a new twist to it this year, and, and we'll be speaking more about this wonderful lady in a few minutes, but um, Ann Yoder, who was one of the absolute backbones of the So we've chosen to permanently name this the Ann Yoder Volunteer of the Year. And Liz Anderson will be honoring and introducing this year's recipient. <laughs> Poor Kristen Pitt, who introduces him more. Or Jessica would probably be doing two speeches. <laughs> For years, Chris Fisher has volunteered at Wichita Community Theater in many capacities, most notably as one of the set designers and build specialists on multiple productions each year. He has improved set design at Wichita Community Theater through his use of 3D design software, so directors and even actors can picture what sets will look like before a single flat is placed. He solves problems on a very tight budget. Chris donates weekends, weekdays, and very late nights in order to produce some beautiful and functional sets. He runs weekend workdays warmly and with a vocal sense of humor, which helps keep attitudes cool and minds fresh. He is skilled at working with brand new volunteers and instructing them so that they can get hands-on experience in some of the most complex portions of the build. He continues to expand his skills by auditioning and performing on stage. He has performed in some of the least acknowledged roles, <laughs> such as unnamed cop <laughs> and dead body. <laughs> the entire first act. <laughs> Seriously, he didn't get a death scene or even very many blackouts. <laughs> Most recently, he got to feature his comic abilities as Slovich, the butcher, in Fools. Sausage will never be the same. <laughs> even with all of this, Chris's greatest strength is his ability to collaborate smoothly with people of varying abilities. In an all-volunteer environment, this is vital. Please welcome to the stage the recipient of the 2015 Ann Yoder Volunteer of the Year Award, Chris Fisher. school, I gotta admit that. Um, Jack Power, my high school drama teacher. I wasn't in drama, by the way. I, <laughs> go figure. Um, he, uh, I came and showed up for one of the productions that helped out on the set. And he met me at the door and said, I don't need your help. Goodbye. <laughs> so I never got to work on that set. It took me 20 years before I got to work on a set, and um, I never looked back. So thank you for letting me do that. And uh, I love to serve. I want to thank my dad for that. He, uh, sorry. Um, ever since I was a little kid, I can remember my dad helping others and trying to make other people's lives better. And it's kind of what I like to try to do. I try to, I show up at the theater, I do what needs to be done, garbage needs to be taken out. I need to build a stairway to the upper balcony that's safe enough that 10 people can stand on it. I'll do that too. So, <laughs> so we all work together. Um, you don't spell uh, theater with I, right? There's no I in there, right? I spelled that right. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher, but I'm a math teacher. <laughs> but I do it. I we do it all as a team, and I appreciate 
appreciate all of you that come and help, and let's keep doing it. Thank you. J.R. Hurst, and the incredible John Bates, um, and Rocky Horror Show, that was here in 1995. Yeah. And it was, it, was an ex, it was an experience, walking in these doors down here and walking up into this theater and seeing that show was an experience. And I am so happy that I get to live that experience uh, for 20 years now. Uh, with Wichita Children's Theater, uh, Mosley Street, and Roxy's now, and with Cabaret Old Town. And thank you so much for being my family. Thank you. Especially when Deb calls and says, hey, do you want to play Hope? And I said, yes, but I'll be three and a half months. 
pregnant. <laughs> so, thanks and thanks. <laughs> it's awesome to know that my family is going to be extending and be a part of this amazing, amazing place. So you guys are all awesome. And on her behalf, um, and she's super smart and witty, so she probably have a lot of cool things to say, but all I can say is thank you from Emily. <laughs> the five men nominated for lead male in a comedy play characters sometimes driven to hilarious extremes. They are Cameron Carlson as Lloyd Dallas and Noises Off, Steve Frazier as Vanya, Vanya, Sonia, Masha, and Spike, Andrew Johnson is Charlie Baker in The Foreigner. Louis Demise is Gabe in Things My Mother Taught Me. And Lyle Valentine is Egbert in Office Party. The two honorees are Cameron Carlson, Joyce Zoff, Andrew Johnson, The Foreigner. Such a great uh, time. Uh, it, it was such a blast to work with everybody. Uh, from Michael Weber, thank you for uh, the, the chance to play Charlie again. I also got to do The Foreigner in high school. And it was great to reprise my role. It was, it was a blast. Uh, thanks to the rest of the cast. And uh, finally, thank you, uh, my wonderful wife, Heather, for all, her, for, all, for all her love and support. people that are leaders in the community that have given all of us an opportunity, in particular Phil Sperry, uh, Deb. Uh, you have shaped the way that community theater and all theater has continued to run through Wichita, and your leadership pulls us together. Uh, we have a really unique bond with everyone because there's no other place, I think, that we actually can be human and actually show people how to make eye contact. <laughs> family conversations and how to be ourselves. So I want to thank you all for that. In particular, I want to thank the talented group of young people that are among us because I'm qualifying young as anybody 35 and younger. It was a it was an amazing ensemble experience. And there was a night the night of the first week of the production that I sat there in the audience and just was in marvel of the talent that was there. And I realized about halfway through that I skipped about four lines and Molly totally pulled it around. <laughs> and we continued to go. And that was kind of the way that the ensemble worked. In particular, thank you to Dan. Thank you to, to JB, who were incredibly supportive of everything that we did. And thank you all for being part of, a, part of our, our audience. In particular, thank you to my wife, Lana, and my son, Chris, who would love to share the stage with Thank you for, for being here and being, for being a part of this wonderful community. When 
mean, they've called me to, to do Emily. I was like, I'm too old. <laughs> but I'll try. <laughs> and I had an amazing time. I was really petrified of doing drama two years ago, three years ago. I had never done a drama before. And to be up here accepting a work for my work in drama is really incredible. So um, I just want to thank Deb and Ryan, who was an amazing scene partner, who just made it so wonderful. And I appreciate everybody who was there. And thank you very, very much. <laughs>
coincidence work out that way. Anyway, um, uh, our last section of the evening is to celebrate the lifetime achievement of several this year really, really worthy recipients of the Mary Jean, Jane Teal Hall of Fame. Um, kind of the uh, main uh, criteria for this is the person needs to have made a contribution to the Wichita area theater for at least 25 years. And, you know, there are so many of us, obviously, in the community that as the years pass and as some people become more involved or less involved, um, some people never uh, received recognition before. Sadly, it was perhaps too late. And we wanted to make up for that in the case of three wonderful participants in the life of our theater. Um, Tom Broderick, who uh, has not been active in quite a while, but was an absolute mainstay of Wichita Community Theater. He passed this um, last January. Um, Tom, among other things, played Sir in The Dresser, which was Mary Jane Teal's last production that she directed for Wichita Community Theater. And some, several of us, I know Bill Cullen was in it as a kid, practically. Uh, Don Winicky was in it. I was able to be in that show. Probably some other people here were involved in that production. Um, Tom was absolutely uh, one of Mary Jane's most faithful supporters and faithful participants and uh, he had a great sense of humor. He had tremendous style. Um, he could play classical characters. He could play modern characters. Um, we haven't been able to contact any of um, Tom's um, surviving family that we're going to continue to try to do that. But I just want to take a moment to, in his memory, and hopefully he's up in some green room somewhere so that he can appreciate this applause that we now offer in his memory. is Ted Whiteside. Ted Whiteside really tragically died way too young. Um, he was uh, the driving force behind the creation of a community theater in Rose Hill. Um, I talked to Tiny Docker this afternoon who was uh, hoping she could come and receive this, but something came out that she couldn't. Um, she said that the drama program at Rose Hill High School would not have been anywhere near what it was uh, without Ted's help for over 30 years. He also was very involved with theater in the Derby area. Um, he was a graduate of Wichita State. Um, he played the lead in the birthday party, which is the first play I ever directed in Wichita State. So um, Ted was uh, a wealth of optimism and goodwill and humor and creativity, great with technical things, great with directing and a very, very fine performer. Um, I understand from Tanya that, uh, that the family probably wants to take the plaque that we're going to give in his honor and put it in Rose Hill High School so that students will see um, the, the example that Ted set for them. So let's have a round of applause. <laughs> Finally, uh, we mentioned this great lady earlier. Um, Ann Yoder, um, it didn't seem like the show was going to open in Wichita unless Ann had some of her <laughs> friends and cronies get together and come and watch her play the dress. Um, she was a tremendous um, help to all the volunteer efforts with music theater, uh, with Center for the Arts. Um, like I say, uh, you know, it always really mattered what Ann thought about the show. Um, I, you, know, you know, if she came after that final dress rehearsal and told you, this is really good, you've got a good show, then you could really count on the fact that the audiences would come and would really appreciate the show. Um, very pleased with, with the fact that um, some of Anne's family is able to be here tonight, and I believe that one of her daughters, Jerry, is going to come and receive the award on her.
Kansas State Teachers College, which is now Emporia State University, where her dad was a biology professor. Um, they went all the time, and when Grandpa would come to our place when I was younger and in school, he was the laugh that you could hear. He laughed so loud, and I think Mom kind of did that too. Probably a lot of you would hear her laughing. Um, she loved all of you so much, and um, was, as you know, just um, a huge supporter. She drug us kids to so many things, and, and her grandkids. Many of you probably know Emily, who was like at everything from this big and up. Um, just thank you so much for recognizing her and remembering her. It means a lot to the family, and uh, we just thank you for being her family and loving her. I also want to just say that I think she'd have been very happy to see Monty Wheeler, I mean Steve Hitchcock, <laughs> and also Kyle Vestas. Thank you guys very much. that are being entered into the Mary Jane Teal Hall of Fame who can be with us. And uh, both of them, although both of them have won multiple Mary Jane Teal awards over the years for their wonderful design work, I still think they're two one of the greatest unsung heroes of Wichita Theater. Um, and so let me first introduce Crystal Meek, who will speak on behalf and honor our first recipient. Well, I have the joy and pleasure of letting you get to know the awesome Jackie Donahue. <laughs> now, how did Jackie get to become a lighting board person, a lighting designer, a stage manager, and a director? Jackie fell in love with theater when she was a student at West High School. She remembers she went to the show Brigadoon, and that still is one of her favorite shows because that was her first play, Love. She remembers the show, but she especially remembers she loved it because, well, all the girls that left West High had a crush on the lead, Kenny Sanderson. <laughs> now she said he must have made an impression because she says, I can't believe I can remember his name. <laughs> After high school, Jackie went to WSU where she did not know what to major in, so she picked political science. And as she said, what could be better? Save the world and get a college education. Jackie's roommate her freshman year was Terry Adams, who was a majoring in theater. So Jackie went to all the shows, she ushered, and then she was able to go to all of Tech Week. And she loved it because she could see that the show change as it went on until opening night. She also said, she had a crush on Hal Davis. <laughs> Who didn't? <laughs> After college, Jackie entered the job market, and like a lot of college graduates, she took a series of jobs that did not amount to much. Her longest employment was at Beaton Embellishment and then Gorgeous Brothers, where she was assistant parts manager. She said the Gorgeous Brother job helped to give her confidence later on when she did start lighting because she knew tools and parts. <laughs> Jackie continued to support live theater, WSU Summer Theater, the Pitt Theater, Music Theater of Wichita, and she went to Wichita Community Theater and she fondly remembers seeing Quilters, Cuckoo's Nest, and Gin Game with Nancy Amos. Terry Adams, who, remember, was Jackie's roommate in college, got re-involved in theater and she dragged Jackie into it. Terry said they needed someone to run the light board for Comedia in 1987. Well, Jackie was hesitant until Terry reminded her that as her roommate, she had blackmail on her and she threatened to go to Jackie's mom. <laughs> So bless that blackmail that got Jackie started. I still want to know what it was. <laughs> Gus Hill trained her to run the light board then, and Jackie said she knew nothing. She didn't even know what a light board looked like. She remembers Jean Ann directed Comedia, 
Christine Tashif and Angie Gear were in it, and she was constantly was afraid she was going to mess it up. But she only experienced a couple of glitches. Well, Jackie thought that was the end of her lighting career. Two months later, she received a call from Mary Jane Teal asking her help with Comedia on the Road. I guess at that time, elements of Comedia were presented at hotel conventions and other venues, and they needed someone to do the follow spot. Jackie said, she heard her brain say no, but her mouth said yes. <laughs> Shortly after that, she got another call to run lights for Mrs. Reardon Drinks a Little at Wichita Community Theater. She remembers Nancy Amos was in it. She loved that show, even though the lead was eating raw meat on stage. The last night of the show, Jackie remembers thinking, I am going to miss this show. So she showed up immediately at the next rehearsal the next day and said, what can I do? <laughs> the show was the oldest living graduate, Misty Maynard, designed the light, and Jackie ran them. Corky Hunting Harding directed, and Jackie also helped with the set. Jackie worked at WCT Workshop and also at Century 2, which she loved. He would show up at 8 to hang the lights, at 9 the set crew come in, at noon, most important, they would all go to the artichoke for lunch and a pitcher of beer. <laughs> Jackie said she loved Century 2 because it was cool to work there. You had to climb up the ladder and go into the ceiling to get to the light board. She was on the catwalk. She said the workshop wasn't as much fun. No catwalk or genie lift. She remembers the year Comedia and Laugh Ad happened the same season, and she did follow spot for both. The first show Jackie designed the lights was for was Julian Elko about the spies, the Rosenbergs. It was written by Lauren Rayner, who was a theater critic for the paper. They came to Jackie in September, and the show was in October, and told her, if you do it, we will get you help. <laughs> Infamous statement. <laughs> she persevered through. The show had 100 cues. It, it won a Kansas ACT award. It went to regional in Joplin where half the cast came down with food poisoning. The show went on and became second in the regionals. The first show she designed was honored. <laughs> she designed and ran the light board for a lot of shows at WCT during the 1990s, and remembers specifically that she did 14 shows from 1993 to 1994. Now her most challenging lighting project was for Love, Valor, and Compassion, which included male nudity on stage. She said she tried to light and not light eight naked men. <laughs> Thomas Ludwig was in rehearsal for that show and was nervous about being on the stage nude. So he asked Jackie to preview when he turns around with just an apron on so he could get comfortable with being nude. Well, she did that for him, and then he ended up not doing the role anyway. <laughs> so Jackie will not only have your back, but she will look at your ass. <laughs> she also designed falsettos with Nick Savarine, Randy Urban, Chad Frist, Jenny Mitchell, Susan K. O'Hearn, and Mark Peters. She then got into directing. Her first show was 1111, an original script written by Thomas Ludwig. And it was a romantic gay comedy dealing with starting over when your partner has died from AIDS. That show started the rating system in the paper. <laughs> Other directing and credits include Marvin's Room, where a cup of ice was supposed to be thrown off stage, and they could not figure out how to give it enough weight so it would sell out the door. So they put M&Ms in it and put a lid on top, but when Michael Weber <laughs> went to throw it, the lid came off and it showered the audience with M&Ms. <laughs> she also directed Waiting in the Wings, and she loved that story and the large female cast, and she remembers the sweet song that Randy Urban sang as part of the show. She then directed Night of the Guana, a show about long monologues. <laughs> then, she, <laughs> then she directed It's a Wonderful Life, the radio play, and then on to stage managing, a lot of it at Center for the Arts. She uh, stage managed Harvey, and she said she worked with an unknown actor called Dick Wellswalker. <laughs> and she appreciated that he always checked his props. <laughs> she worked on Diary of Anne Frank, and she said it was a challenging show because of the film, light, and sound cues. She worked on Wait Until Dark, and she remembers the knife in the wall was problematic. She worked at Complete Works of William Shakespeare, 
our town noises off twice. Wit, she designed lights and stage managed. Bravo Caruso, where one night after rehearsal she was writing up rehearsal notes and things were locked up, she thought, and she looked up to see a gun drawn on her by a police officer. A new employee had set the alarm wrong, so the silent alarm had been tripped. Let's say stage managing is exciting. <laughs> Jackie did try to count all the shows she was involved in. She worked on light elements for 100 plus shows, had at least 50 stage managing gigs, and directed six shows, as well as set painting, hairdressing, and she even made a bridesmaid's dress for Vonda Schuster for Cemetery Club. She was on the MJ, first MJT board and has been on the MJT committee nine different times. She was on stage as an actor twice in its runnings in the family, and as a nurse with 12 lines. She was one of the mourners in the house of Renata Alba, and she would fill in the other mourners' lines if they could not be there. And she remembers Brad Perky in drag was one of the mourners. <laughs> she, she also has helped with lighting at Kichai Place House, Andover Community Theater, Cabaret Old Town, Empire House, Wichita Children's Theater, Freak Show Productions, and Desperate Characters. She taught a stage managing class for one semester at WSU and a theater appreciation class at Cali County Community College. Jackie has been honored in the past with the MJT Crystal A for directing for its wonderful life, lighting for the Tempest, sound for bus stop and fleet works of William Shakespeare, and she won a special merit as stage manager. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my good friend and wonderful human being, Jackie Dawn. Justin Snowden, Zach Baylor, 
Tony Applegate, Becky Janet, Bob Lancaster, Casey Eubank, Kay Carroll, Terry Mott, Wanda Rogers, Mike Bakovich, Tom Harms, and Misty Mayer. And it's kind of strange, I was telling JB earlier tonight, theater gets in your blood. And all of August, or the middle of August actually, I was kept thinking, what am I forgetting to do? There's something important I'm supposed to do. Then I suddenly realized it was the week we normally started rehearsals for uh, the first show at the center. So the calendar's kind of built into my body anymore. <laughs> so it seems a little strange not to be doing that. And it is sad to think that the place I put so much um, energy and heart and work in may not have any more performances there. But I want to remind you that things look good before out at the center. And yet, Charlotte Sanderson continued the theater program. Tom Fry continued the theater program. And JP continued the theater program. So I have some hope. were meant to do was to kind of get people to know each other and bring unity to the theater community. So the first part of this is about six months after all the problems at community theater and after she had left, um, I was up in the light booth looking the board and I looked down and I thought, this is like six months after. And there was Mary Jane sitting in the audience. So during intermission I went down and found her the bathroom and she told me not to tell anyone she was there. And I go, well, sure, Mary Jane, like, nobody knows you're here. <laughs> but she had come to see Becky Walters, because Becky had been doing comedia over the years, and this was kind of his first film musical, and she wanted to see him as Beach, Beach the musical. And then, a few years later, Nancy Amos directed um, Bella Bamhurst. And one night, sure enough, in the audience was Mary Jane Teal. Again, I ran into her in the bathroom. <laughs> we kind of hung out there. <laughs> and she said, don't tell anyone. And the last time I saw Mary Jane at a show was a few weeks before she died. Uh, she had come to see Hamlet. Again, we met up in the bathroom. Uh, but she told me that some of her former students uh, had asked her to come, so she came. And she was kind of in the back where normally she used to sit in the front, but for some reason she was in the back where I could see her quite plainly. And um, the show received a standing ovation, and the first person to stand up was Mary Jane Teal. And so it just shows what a class act she was, and I'm really glad I got to work with her for the few times I did. And I guess I'd like to close in saying that it's really more important to do good theater with good people than where we do it. So thank you all very much.
work on every single production of Shakespeare in the Park since 1981, uh, throughout its various incarnations. And I counted about 43 shows, there's probably more. Um, and at Wichita Community Theater, um, she has costumed from one to seven shows every single season from 1991, where she currently serves as technical director. She has two storage garages where she keeps all of her costumes <laughs> and stuff. And a visit there can be kind of exciting. You never know what may fall out. <laughs> In her spare time, she manages the medical library at Wesley Medical Center, feeds stray cats, and swims with dolphins. <laughs> uh, she's received eight Mary Jane, Jane Teal Awards for costume design. I expect she will receive many more. Uh, would you please welcome Jay to the stage? said over and over again tonight, and it's absolutely true, we are a great community of people. Um, I, you know, I've, I've experienced a lot of theater in different circumstances, different parts of the country. We are extraordinarily blessed to be such a community that really does love and support each other, as is true much not compared to what some theater communities really are honestly like. So, uh, go see each other's productions, go be involved in each other's productions. Uh, there's already been about at least eight productions done this new season. And so, and the season will run fairly long this year because 
Um, Alma Mia doesn't close until August 21st, so uh, there'll be a, at least 50 productions to see this year. So thanks everybody for being here, and congratulations to all of us for getting 